after day, it seems in my mind I've got them big red on the line. That's where I go when I'm itching to feed my seven day addiction. Hello guys, it's Sam Robles from Follow Fishing on The Art of Fishing. Today is episode 12 and today actually we're talking about buying and owning a boat. So it's January, early beginning of the year, boat season. It's actually Houston Boat Show is kicking off here. Uh, people are really excited. People are like, oh, people wait all year for the boat show to either buy uh, boats, rods, reels, whatever it is, right? So that's all coming up. And so we thought it'd be a good idea to kind of have a pre-boat show conversation here on our show and get some people that are really familiar with selling boats and everything that there is to know about boats on our show and let them answer some questions about that. So, uh, so yeah, thanks, thanks guys for tuning in. And uh, let, actually, I'll let my guests introduce themselves here. Hi, I'm Jesse. Hi, I'm Christy. And I'm George. Yes, and so our so our guests so these are our, sorry, <laughs> Jesse, Chrissy, and George. So so, so they, they actually are the guys from the sportsmen. So you guys saw it here on our yes. on our on our backdrop here that the sportsman here and the sportsman is a boat show or a boat um, dealership boat dealership here in the valley. They carry several different lines. We'll cover that here in a minute. Uh, but they they move a lot of boats here in the valley and, and they're getting ready for the boat shows and that uh, we wanted to bring them up. So thanks again, guys, for agreeing to come out here. Like, before we even get started, uh, Jesse, what what are you? What's your position there? Uh, I'm in sales. Um, been there for about three years. Okay. Yes, and I'm Christy. I am the general manager. Oh. I've been there 31 years. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm George. Obviously, uh, <laughs> one of four years uh, in sales. Also. Okay. Yes. All right. Good deal, guys. So, so let's let's start right off the bat, right? So, boat show is coming up here. So, what's the first thing like someone needs to know? Like, all right, uh, I guess first thing, uh, why wait to the boat show, or, or is there is there a difference of waiting to go into the boat show to, to kind of get out and, and purchase a boat? Uh, is there something about the new year? Or kind of what is it? Uh, is it a good time to buy boats, or is it just really just another time of the year to buy a boat? Well, for us, it's the, the best time of the year to buy because we offer extra incentives. Uh, discounts, uh, financing terms, uh, just, you know, we have a lot of models available. The year's just starting out, so you can special order boats and get them rather quickly. So there's there's a lot of advantages to having, you know, buying at the boat show. So, so you do get a better deal, essentially, buying at the boat show. We yeah, offer yeah, different incentives. Different incentives. Yeah, there's not, okay. Now, is it like a regular car dealership where you're trying to liquidate your 2019 compared to your 2020s, or does it, does it work that way even in the, in the boat? Well, you know, actually, for years, we've been blessed to not have any, to liquidate any older models. Oh, wow. um, this is the first year we actually have, I think, two models maybe we need to liquidate. So we do have some extra discounts on those models. So go get them before they, uh, they're up. So. Yes. <laughs> Please come and buy them now before the boat show because yeah. they're, they're going to sell quickly. They'll be gone. Yeah. They will. Yeah. All right, so so the boat show is a good time. So so kind of what what's like the the typical type thing? So you come out here, you're gonna save maybe five ten percent, or is it even that much, or it's just kind of the financing packages vary? Well, it depends on the the model that you're buying. Um, the not just the boat model, but the engine model. Because sometimes motor manufacturers might offer extra incentives as well. Um, so, so, so going into the 2020 boat show, what are some things that are incentive wise that are people that are really drive people to, to buy boat at the boat show? I would say discounts, discounts. overall discounts, um, extended warranties on the motors. Is there any specific motors that have like better deals coming on right now or, or, or in boats? Or? Yes, um, Yamaha, Evinrude, um, and Suzuki are offering, actually Mercury as well, they're all actually offering uh, extended protection so they come with a standard warranty and then they're offering extra years they and said that was about five years kind of what, what it is right yeah, now. every engine manufacturer is different so um, typically everybody's three years and then sometimes you can get an extra three years or an extra two years at the boat show at, well at the boat show season so it starts off like right now and it probably ends right at the end of March so in the next two to three months you should be able to get the best warranties on and, the motors. And so those apply really like, I mean, there's boat shows all across the state, right? So like, so come January, there's, a, there, there's you know, it really, and it's like every week and there's a boat show in different areas. And it doesn't matter where you live, 
at I guess at the point when, when both seasons here, it's the, the, the incentives are here. It doesn't matter if you're in Corpus, Houston, or, or South Texas. You have yeah, access to them. Correct. The engine manufacturers know that this is typically the time of year that both dealers have boat shows. So this is when they put the incentives out, and this is the best time to get the best warranty on. So when you say season, that doesn't necessarily have to be in those three days of the show. Or correct. So, so you have until maybe now until March, and you'll get the, the same deals as you would do the boat show? Well, not the same deals, but the same warranty coverage on the, let's say, a, a Yamaha, it's six years right now, so you can get that from right now but until certain discount and stuff will be until March, the yeah. The discounts on just the engine, I'm um, just the haul, or the package would be just specifically at the boat show. Gotcha. Okay. So, so incentive uh, uh, financing is also, you offer different financing, better financing rates there at the boat show, kind of yep. early in the year? Yes. So, so it seems like there's a lot of incentive to go ahead and start buying and start planning around buying the boat here at, at the boat show. I mean, we talked about better pricing, better warranty, and better financing. So collectively, it does seem like a, like it's a good thing to go. So, no, I was let's say I mean I've, I've never owned a boat. So I would want to go and, and buy a boat. You know, you know, pretend I guess I don't have any friends to help me out with. <laughs> you know, what 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 do I need to know going in there? You know, is it type of fishing that I want to do? Is it the type of area I'm going to take it to? Like, how do I choose the right boat for what I'm going to be doing? Well, that's where we come into play. So I guess the first question we ask you is, how many people do you want to fish on average? Okay. You know, some, some, some people want to come in there and they want to get the big boat. It's not necessarily the, the case, you know? A lot of people need to be educated. So that's where we come into play. So it's the number of people that are going to be out there is Absol- the first question. <clears throat> Absolutely. And on average, I mean, obviously everybody wants to keep the family. Yeah. Right, and friends, but in reality, we're only gonna take two or three guys every once in a while, or a majority of the time. Yeah. So yeah. it's our job to help you fit your needs. All right, so, so, so this first question, right? So, how many people are you gonna take out? Let's say it's three or four, right? Okay, so now we have an idea that, and that, and you use that information to, to do what exactly? So, who okay. wants to get them on the right? Yeah, boat? to you know? kind of match somebody to the size of boat that they need. Okay, so the some, length of the boat, the length the of the boat. Of the boat. Yeah, if you have a guy that's gonna fish. Uh, five people most of the time, you're not going to put them in an 18 footer because it's going to be too small. Okay. If he's fishing, you know, four people most of the time, it's five every now and then. Well, a 21 footer with, you know, a good horsepower motor would probably be somewhere in his range now. If he wants to do offshore fishing, then obviously a, a shallow water boat is not the option for him. So we kind of try to guide people into. Uh, and do people know these answers when you're, when you're asking them? I mean, it seems like, oh, what kind of fishing would you be like? Well, like you said, I might take my dad out. Well, like, what, what, what that one time that all my buddies are in town? And so, like, how do like do, do, do people have a hard time answering these kind of questions? Or, do... Well, I think so. For the most part, they know what they want. Okay. Yeah, but it's it's a learning experience. You know, it's not like a car. You know, this is recreational. You know, some people only have one boat their entire life. Correct. Cars. The thing down here is that. Down here, we're, pre- we're predominantly shallow water fishing. So right. the majority of people coming in, they know they want a shallow water boat. Yep. And so occasionally we'll get the people that want to go offshore, which is rare, or they want a pontoon, which is rare. <laughs> so most people come in wanting something to go shallow. Okay. So that's pretty easy to deal with. And, and so most so that being said, most of the boats that you sell are shallow water running boats. That's all we sell. Okay. And so what are some of the shallow water, or what are some of the brands that you guys carry at the sports that are going to run shallow? We strongly believe in the shallow sport and the SEB model. So okay. those are the only two we carry. Okay. So shallow sport and SEB. Okay. Yes. What would be the difference between the two? Like, I mean, do, do I want something, you know, do I want a shallow sport compared to the SEB based on what I'm doing? Or are they both pretty much pretty, you know, run the same, I guess? How would you guys answer that one? It's more of a, you know, what's going to fit your needs. You know, okay. we both love fishing. You know, but my preference and his preference, and then your preference. I mean, but you don't like the same. You and I both, well, you and I both like the same boat, yes. and him and I like two different boats. Right. He likes the CB, I like the shallow sport, um, but just because I feel that you know, I like the shallow sport. I've always, you know, as a kid, that's all I wanted. Yeah, you know, that's what I was brought up seeing. Yeah. Or in now, South Texas, you see them all the time. Yeah, right? it's uh, still out there. You go out to the bar, the boat ramp every morning, and you know there's a line of them, and there's just, well, there's, a, there's a lot of boats out here. Yes. But they're just two different boats, you know. I mean, Shallow Sport and the CB, they're great boats for one, but they, they're two different 
animals, you know? So, so um, what would kind of be like, so what's the variance? So like, so what is it about you, the type of fishing you like to do, or just kind of the priority um, on the design? I, I think the SEB is more of a, it's a user boat, and you, you can control the boat just how you want it. It's going to handle the chop differently. Um, I would say the shallow sport's probably a little bit easier to use versus the SEB. Okay. Um, I would say you have to be a little bit more experienced on a, an SEB versus a, a shallow sport. Okay. Um, and I, that's just because of the design of the hull? The design of the hull, the weight of the hull, uh, the high horsepower on the engines. Um, it's just, you, you'll see a more experienced person driving an SCB versus, I mean, you have a lot of fishermen that are very, very experienced driving shallow sports, but the SCBs, you'll see more of a, a hardcore fisherman yeah, using an SCB. Yeah, first-time buyer, you probably, you were probably here on the tour of the shallow sports. Correct. Yeah, first-time buyer for sure. Yeah, so the SCB too, they only come, they only have two models. In one length versus the shallow sport where they have multiple models in different lengths. Six models. Of so, okay. okay. Now, the SCB is known for their speed and they handle the chopper. You know? Yeah. So, we got a lot of people from the Corpus area you know, come down in long distances. Yeah. They got bigger full tanks. Um, it's just a different route. Right? So, it's really the type of fisherman you are that yeah. really determines, you know, what, and it goes back to that first question, you know, what kind of fishermen are, what, what kind of fishing do you want to do? Is it recreational family type stuff and you've gotten more staring towards the shallow sport but if it was something more of the uh, the aggressive type I want to move here I'm going to cover a lot of area and we want to get in and out and move a lot and then that would be more of your your SCB guys mm-hmm. yeah. all right yeah. so, so so one thing you said is that those SCBs come in, in one lane and so the shallow sports come in different lengths so so what are the different lengths that that you commonly what's the most common length of, of both that's, that's out there well I mean this year compared to last year's different Really? Last last year, people uh, are having more babies and having more kids. I don't know. I guess so. <laughs> but before yeah. our eighteen, 18. our eighteen was our biggest seller. We're now selling a lot of twenty ones. Twenty ones, the twenty classics. Uh, SCP recons, they're hot. You know, you, uh, just gotta people get them quick. People are gravitating to bigger boats. The SCBs come in two sizes. They come in a twenty-two footer. That's the S twenty-two and the R twenty-four is a twenty-four footer. Um, not a huge difference in the size. Um, you know, once you see the layout of the boat. But when you go to back to the shallow sport, you have an 18 and a 21 and a 24. And those, you can kind of gradually see the changes between them. So, so an 18 foot boat, uh, regardless of what it is, is more for someone that goes out. Like, like can I, how, how do you know an 18 foot is boat? Like what, how many people or what? Well, I mean, an 18 foot, a 21 foot, a 24 foot. And you do the, the bear, you're going to sit for people. Okay? Each but, boat, the boats are rated. For okay. maximum people, yeah. yes, right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the 18, a lot of people want to start with an 18 because you know, shell sport holds their value. Uh, so, you know, families will get that, keep it a few years, get rid of it, and they upgrade. Yeah, okay. you know? And then the person that really wants that 24, they start with the 21. Yeah. And okay. they do the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing, like, and depending on how you're hauling, I mean, it's, it's, it's a different mechanism to, help, to drive and haul a bigger boat than it is, you know, an 18 foot than a 25 or 26 foot, right? Yeah, Absolutely. definitely. Very different. Yeah. Just like, just like even like the way you maneuver, how you get in, how you get it on the trailer, like just even driving down the highway with them, right? It's just completely different. Mm-hmm. So I can see where like an 18 foot is like, okay, I'm going to learn boating, I'm going to learn how my truck, I'm going to learn all these different things on it, and then as you kind of build some confidence, you would go on, get to the next boat. Okay. Now, and speaking of confidence, I guess, um, and like, I have looked into it, and a lot of people tell me the same thing, is you want to buy a used boat first. Like, is that something that you also use boats? We do, we sell pretty much. Now, is that something that you would recommend to a first-time buyer and say, you know what, or would you recommend them buying a smaller boat, you know, if it's a first-time boater, I guess, if you want to I don't think we really recommend one way or the other. I think customers kind of have their mind made up whether they want a pre-owned, whether they're comfortable with a pre-owned model or sticking to a, a new model. Um, if somebody comes in looking for a pre-owned and we don't have what they're looking for, we will show them um, our new line, yeah. you know, our new models, and some people do convert to a new model. I, I think it's very dependent on, like, I don't think all used boats are the same. That's like, that's that's a big variance in it, right? So, like, me buying a used boat off of Craigslist or off, you know, something I see on the side of the road, not, not that there's anything wrong with it, right? Yeah. But I, there's a lot of uncertainty in that, right? So, I'm just like, I, I may take this boat out and it may work perfectly fine, or I may find myself um, having to get towed in quite often, you know, the first few times until we can figure out what's going on. Whereas, I think if you buy a boat, 
uh, a used boat from a dealership, there's you know a certain level of inspections and revalidations so, uh, of safety, safety systems and performance that kind of minimize some of that risk and uncertainty. And is there a big difference in price? I know you said that they hold the value for you. Is there a huge difference in price when it comes to using it? Or I is think it just the finances? It depends on, on the year and the pocket of the boat actually that we have. So, yeah. I mean, if we have a 2016 and we've had them, you know, it's only a year or two years old. You know, they're right there. But they actually have a little bit more equipment. Some have the power poles already. Some have GPS already. They have the lights. You can get a brand new one without anything and you're going to be closed, but it just depends on the boat. And is it just like a car where you have more incentives and better incentives on the newer ones than you do on the, on the used? I wouldn't say there's any more incentives on new versus used. Um, we do, a, a, like you mentioned before, we do a complete 35 point inspection on all our pre-owned uh, boats and even consignment boats. If we're going to sell one for somebody, that's we require that of a consignment boat as well because obviously we're selling it and we want to make sure that our, the end buyer is happy with what they buy. Okay. So, um, so yeah, we, we make sure that everything's you know running correctly. Yes, boat, motor, and trailer, everything. Okay, just the full pack. So again, there's just like it's been checked, it's been verified. Not to say you won't have any issues with it, but at least anything that you would have that could have been tested for and seen. Correct. Uh, you guys have been done some inspections for it and validated it. Okay. And we also offer warranty on used boats. We really? we offer a short, limited warranty. Um, if the the product doesn't have warranty itself, and we can also sell um, warranty. So, so, what is like the warranty on a used boat per se? It's going to depend on the biggest thing is going to depend on what engine model is on there, because you know, uh, and depending on how new it is and things like that. So it, it varies. It varies. Okay. Yes, but minimum is thirty days. Thirty days. Yes. Okay. Get it out. Test it. Fish it on for thirty days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, and also we take you out. So we're going to take you out on that boat if you're interested. If it's a pre-owned. So once we get the numbers out of the way and, and you like those numbers and, and you're where you want to be, last step is let's take you out on that boat. Make sure this is what you really want. Yeah. So we're not afraid to show you. So we're going to show you. And then after you buy it, then we take you out again and we show you how to operate and maintain it and all that. Just don't show more of my fishing spots are at. I only have two. (laughs) (laughs) Jesse, it looked like you were kind of... Yeah, so to answer your question, um, yeah, I would recommend a used boat to uh, a first-time buyer. Um, Something good to learn on. Um, I'd probably recommend a boat that's maybe three or four years old, maybe five, maybe still has a little bit of warranty. Um, That way you have a little bit of peace of mind. And yeah. you know you're getting a good boat, and you're not spending new money. Um, so, I mean, yeah, definitely I would recommend a used yeah, boat. And that's basically what they had told me. It was like you, you, scratching an old boat is not going to hurt you as much as scratching a brand new boat or, or yeah. doing something wrong where you're going to you know, harm the boat. You know, on an old one, is probably a little easier on the heart than it is on a brand new Yeah, no, definitely. But, okay. So, so we talked about shallow sports and SCBs, and, and so uh, and new and used uh, really big. So, kind of where pricing wise, where, where does a new shallow sport say you know like your lowest one, your cheap or your cheapest one really? Where does that start off, and kind of where are the SCBs price that just so we can kind of have a, a reference point here? So the shallow sport eighteen sport um, is going to run roughly around thirty nine nine. Um, that's a starting point, and then. Um, that's going to be all your basic equipment, jack plate, tilt and trim, digital gauges, uh, coolers, trailer. Ready to fish. Ready, 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 ready to, to fish. And, and Coast Guard component. Exactly. Ready to fish uh, for a little bit under 40000 Okay. Um, and then the SCB line starts around sixty one, sixty two, um, And that will be, you know, 200 horsepower engine, all the basics as well. Uh, bigger haul, um, obviously double axle trailer. Uh, so somewhere in that range, and then obviously you go on and add all the equipment you want. Uh, you can make it as basic as you want or as equipped as you want. And obviously the numbers go up from there. <laughs> We've never <laughs> sold a sixty-something thousand dollar SUV. Yeah, right? it's, so, it's, it's yeah. easy, right, to see. Like you know, you can start off with forty thousand dollar boat, and it's easy just by adding you know a few things here that you know you, you end up with a sixty-five or seventy thousand dollar really bad. So I would imagine. So first thing I tell my customers is, look, let's put what you want. This is a rough draft. This is not what you're going to get. We're going to trim the fat. Okay. We need you to see it on paper. Yeah. And we need to get you the wants, not the needs. What do you, what, I mean, what do you need, not the wants? Let's, yeah. let's get you good out there, you know. Um, we're not going to let you make a mistake and over, over the door. Yeah. That's tough, you know? I think a lot of times, too, customers are surprised that how much, how little the payment might go up with adding some of those features. They, you know, they're just seeing the dollar amount and not 
the actual amount being spread over payments. So okay. that kind of helps. Yeah. 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 So, so what? So, so now we talked about forty thousand dollar boat. You know, can you go up from there? Uh, I, it can go, you know, a hundred thousand dollars, right? Really, depending on how you get the bigger, badder one with all the hundred thousand whistles on it. So you can easily spend that, and obviously, finance. I mean, that's a lot of money, right? So, so how to, I, and most people I would imagine finance a, a boat like this. So, uh, typically, what are the financing terms and cents of both interest rate and duration for a uh, for a new boat? Well, I mean, as far as term, anything under fifty thousand, we have banks that can go up to fifteen years without okay. without penalty to pay it off soon. Anything over fifty, we have banks that will go twenty years okay, so without penalty. Fifteen to twenty years is, is, is roughly the roughly. Rate. And again, you, there's going to be customers that don't want to do that, you know. But you can do the fifteen years and cut it in half and pay it in seven. Yep, and it helps out. I mean, the payments are they're manageable, manageable right very they're not, manageable. yeah they're, they're not going to change your life you're, you're still going to be able to put bread in <laughs> you're still going to be able to feed your kids yeah, yes. and, you know, people that lie boats and, and i've been i've been there too it's like oh, i'm going to catch so much fish <laughs> and then you don't catch fish right and it's like man it's, it's like, fishing I'm, man well they say like i'm going to spend you know three four hundred dollars a month on a boat payment and i'm going to have fish in my fridge and i'm going to cut down on my grocery bill <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work now the fish you can get them at hub yeah yeah my, my mindset is if you want to eat fish, go buy it. Like <laughs> it's just cheaper that way. It's it's easier. It's, it's just makes things. And so one thing that we've been we're adamant about is just like I mean, fishing, going out fishing isn't about bringing home fish. It's about enjoying whatever it is you're doing out there on the water. Whether you enjoy just the nature, just enjoy the the, the bonding with your with your family, friends, and just kind of whatever it is, like the self-reflection, whatever it is, everyone has their own reasons why they go out and fish, and it's it's not about it's about making memories. It's about making memories. It's about I mean I know people that like to go fish by themselves, right? And just because they want to get away from people and just like this is my alone time. And, and so whatever it is, right? People just get out there, and it's not about bringing home a, a bunch of fish. Sometimes it is that, right? Well, well, yeah, well for us it's not, but for the wives at home. <laughs> you yeah, expect it, right? Yeah, you're, you're, right. you're gone all day. And <laughs> so, like, I, I can't. No fish. And again, and again you don't bring home many fish. It's like, are you sure you're going fishing? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually that's where y'all come in because, I mean, like you said, making memories, but I hate to make a memory with a boat breaking down on there. So I think that's where y'all come in and, and actually have a good product like that you know, to allow us to actually enjoy ourselves and not have to worry about something breaking down. You know, so... Yeah, it's pretty pretty cool what you're doing, especially that that just you know stuck in my head is that you're not going to allow a customer to go out there and overdo it, exactly. and they're going to get exactly what they need. Well, I mean, what ninety percent of our customers are repeat business mm-hmm. because you know we, we we build that rapport with our customers, and it's not a they're not customers; it's family. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, uh, it, it's you'd be surprised how many people stop by and. Just to hang out. Just to say hi, you know. I mean, you guys know how, how tight knit the fishing oh, yeah. community is. Everybody has each other's back, and everybody wants to budge. And we're, we're fishermen too, you know. We like to fish. We're out on the water all this, all the time too, you know. We we know what's out there, what's what's good, and, yeah, and you know we try to help everybody out as if they're family, you know, whether it's a used boat or a new boat or our brand or another brand, you know. I think that's what it's all about. I mean, it's all about helping people and kind of building that network and just kind of just building that, getting people out on the water. It doesn't matter if you're selling boats, lures, rods, shirts, whatever, right? It's about building that community and kind of sharing that with other people so that you guys can, uh, get, so they you can all enjoy it. We like to say, we're, we're already just one big family and it's like, it's something, you know, you go out to these shows or anywhere here, you start talking to a customer and you never know, like, you, you don't know him, right? And you, the first time you meet him, you know, you, Hey, you like the fish? I like the fish too. And then five minutes later, you're showing each other pictures on the, on your phone. And then like, <laughs> it's an hour later, you're still talking to this yeah. person, just oh, sharing fishing stories. It's just like it's a bond in between like like people that just immediately. And it's just, it's just really crazy. And it's really good. So, so so anyone? So so we talked about. So you said ninety percent of your people are roughly ninety, or a good amount, I should say, are repeat customers. So these are people that go, they bought a boat, and then. Uh, they, they, they decide that maybe they bought the 18 foot or 21 for uh, 21 and they were ready to upgrade and, and so kind of what's that process so you, you buy a boat um, and let's say two three five whatever year you decide you want to upgrade so kind of kind of what is that process like well uh, we've got two options you can do a trade-in or consignment uh, you bring in the boat Jesse or myself look over it pull up an NDA and you know, we see what it's valued at, we make an offer, and see what we can do for you there, and uh, get you into a trade. So, so, so consignment or trade, and consignment basically, the boat's there for sale, and, and somebody sells it, then at that point, they can, they, you 
is that credit to Turbo? Okay. And and, it, and is, is that I mean, kind of what are some of the fees associated with administrating that deal if someone's going to buy new load? Some of it it depends on you know the the customer you know how long they've been with us, how many boats they've bought, repeat, you know, how many referrals they've okay, sent so to it's us. Okay, it's a Yes, it, it does vary. Okay. Um, and then trade inside, I mean, like, so how often do you see people, like, how, well, it's kind of, how, how, how often or how long do people hold on to boats these days before they, they, they are ready to trade in and upgrade? And I've had customers that bought a boat and eight months later they trade it. They get a bigger <laughs> boat, you know, and then you got your customers that went away, you know, they, you know, they enjoy their boat. Yeah. Uh, you also got customers that downgrade because, you know, they're kids are going to college, you know, and guess what? Daddy's at home fishing by himself. So now he wants to go on an 18 classic by mm-hmm. himself, you know, so it's, it's different. Man. Yeah. You got all types. You know? That's why I'm not boring because it's, it's awesome. <laughs> it's you know? a different story every day. Every day is different. Yeah. So Jacob's here. He's saying, what's up guys. And so what's up Jacob. Uh, and actually anyone that's watching right now, you guys have any questions here right now is a good time to go ahead and get them in here and we'll go ahead and cover them here. So, um, so, so what's new and what's what's coming out in 2020? What are people? What are things people should be excited about, looking forward to, uh, in terms of uh, new motors or new components or new upgrades? And anything that really stands out in terms of you know, <clears throat> the new X3. The new X3. Uh, the, 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 the design is phenomenal. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but the Mod V's came out. Yeah, it's it's them up a little bit. Yeah. Um, the 24 Sport. 24 Sports. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot going on. I don't want to. Can't yeah, say yeah. too much. So, yeah. I mean, I want to show you the yeah, show. We need you to come to the show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, it's already a great boat. Yeah, it's only getting better. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we get a lot of input from our customers. Mm-hmm. You know, so Shellsport listens to that. You know, and now you can go on to Facebook or not on the web page, and it's boat builder. Yeah, I saw that. Builder. It's actually boat really cool. So now <laughs> you can just go in there and start. You know, let your wife see your Christmas list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just put everything on there. Let her trim the fat. <laughs> just kind of go in there and kind of, kind of frame it for that. Um, so, so, um, and, and you guys specifically, so do you guys stock a lot of new boats, or is it mostly like you come in and you choose what you want and then you you, you have that build, or how, how does that process work? We do have a, a large selection of inventory, but you can also custom order your boat. So we, we, I don't know what the ratio is. I guess you guys could probably. I would say probably sixty percent of our boats are are custom ordered, um, and we have the other forty percent of the boats that we sell are stock units. Okay. Uh, me and me or George will design, um, you know, boats. We have to order five or six boats a month or ten or whatever. We'll split, and he'll kind of design it the way he wants, and I'll kind of design it the way I want. You know, based on what your customers based on what we're selling, what's been the most popular, colors wise. So, so what are right now, what are the most popular colors and options that people are looking for? It's tough. Yeah, it's it's tough. tough. It's, it's <laughs> never the same. You know, it's never the one same. One time we thought it was seafoam green, then it was Laguna green, then you had your grays. And yeah. It's it's just, kind of goes in waves. Yeah. yeah. You know, Carolina blue is kicking off. And a new color just came out. In fact, that's the that's color where you demo. We, we won't talk much about it right now. I'll be looking for it. Actually, uh, maybe I'll get it off a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the that color you said? <laughs> Sharky? <laughs> <laughs> but when you say custom, like, I mean, what, what do you mean by custom? Just the color? Or is there so, a custom could be anything. Um, sometimes we'll walk, you walk into a showroom and you see, uh, you know, a Carolina Blue 18 foot shallow sport with a 115 heaven room, you know? And somebody says, I want this exact same boat, but I want a Yamaha on it, you know? So, we, we would call that a custom order because we custom ordered it just for you. Right. But at the same time, when we're talking about it, you say, well, I kind of like that feature and how much would it be to add this? So then there goes that boat that nobody else has because it looks very similar, but it has this option or that option that that boat doesn't have. So a motor swap is not as easy as saying, like, I want that one on this one. No, definitely not. We, we would order a whole new boat for you. And it's come pre-rigged or you guys do the rigging there at your shop? Um, the boats that we sell, Shalsport does a okay. full rig on them. Okay. Um, there's some accessories that we can add at our shop. Um, power poles, GPSs. Um, say you ordered, you know, I have a stock boat and you say, hey, well, I really wanted a GPS and a power pole. We can get that done uh, right away. Sure. At our so power pole is not stock on any boat. Uh, it's not stuck. They're on almost every boat, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's like, it's like an option that everybody wants. Mm-hmm. So, so, what is it about the power pole that people really like, and what is it that going to keep some people well, back? Well, I mean, for weight fishermen, I mean that's that's a it's a gold mine, man. You can walk, turn around, 
pick it up and let your boat come to you. You never have to walk back, yeah. you know. Or you can just have a lazy guy on your boat. <laughs> he doesn't want to throw the anchor. Just put the button. Yeah. It's just yeah. convenience, man. You know, at the dock or you know, when you're picking up a weight fisherman, you put the power pole down. You know, it's it's different different scenarios. You know. So, so power pole is almost a must for you know fishing down here. What are other things that people are just absolutely must upgrade? Must. Must. Well, it's not a must, but a, a lot of people do well, like well, to use it. Must, but yes. must, must in the context but a nice, that everybody. A lot, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm gonna say a backrest. GPS is serious. Is it what? the backrest on your lean post? The backrest. Okay. Remember, you just had a lean post. That's yes. the standard base package. So I, if you want to take the wife, and the wife, you want the wife to say <laughs> yes, you better get her a backrest. Yeah. Oh, and a radio, because she's a yeah, yeah, of course. Yes. Probably not going to want to fish, just like my wife and daughter. They just, like, they just care about the music that's going to be out there. And Make sure the margaritas are full, and yeah, we'll be okay. <laughs> that, so. and, and, and I've got a boat that's got a deck on it, and so they just, like, hang me out on the deck and just look out the sun, and yeah. like, I'm in the back corner trying to fish. And, trying to fish. <laughs> trying to fish, and so, but, uh, but it's funny, because, like, we have, like, my, my fishing experiences are completely different when my wife and my daughter go with me, right? I imagine everyone starts, like, that same thing, right? Like, but we're going fishing, we have certain spots we're going to go to. There's nothing pretty about them, right? They just that. And then if uh, my wife and my daughter are going, is we're going to, to the island and we're going to be fishing right back to, you know, that little Falls area, just uh, just by Louie's and that kind of area. We're not going to drift very far. We're just going to get through there. We're going to go eat lunch <laughs> there at the, at the restaurant there. Then we're going to go. We're going to go play in the beach a little bit. And that's really family time. Yeah, it's family time. And, and I enjoy it just as much, right? It's just, it's not, it's not like the type of fishing. But if Baby and I and some of my other friends and Victor are going, we're just, it's, it's a completely different, uh, it's a different animal and a different beast. So, Definitely. but yeah, no, no, no. So, so the other question um, I was going to ask is, so, so we talked about, you know, we talked about forty thousand dollars for a boat, kind of a, a starting, and then kind of fifteen uh, to twenty years. So, kind of, what does that usually break down to in terms of a monthly payment? <clears throat> I mean, that just depends also on, I mean, there's a couple of variables, credit score, credit you know, score. So, what, like, so what's a, kind of, what are, what's the range of interest rates, kind of, where do they start, like, best credit, you know, let's say you got an 800 credit score, and, and you know, kind of, what's an interest rate on, on something on the boat? Again, on the credit score, there's more variables, okay. you know, yeah. debt to income, uh, you know. Uh, I mean, it could be. What's the best credit score you guys just, see? Let me just let me just throw something out. Let's say forty-two thousand dollars boat, six and a half interest rate, fifteen years, average about three thirty, three seven, eight thirty. Okay, so under four hundred dollars, you can kind of get you can get yourself in a nice shallow sport for under forty thousand dollars. Under assuming you know your your your, your credit score is fine and everything's there. And that's just, I mean that's just that, that's buying the boat. And so and what about like uh, it's one of the things I really wanted to carry, and that's kind of where I'm going with this is that. Uh, Trying to get the an understanding of the total cost of ownership, right, of owning a boat. Because it's more than just, you know, just your boat payment, right? You could, you could, you're gonna have your boat payment is gonna be sitting out there and getting your boats out there. So, so what are other things that you have to pay for when, when you're getting a boat other than your boat payment? When you're financing, you have to get insurance, yep. just like you do your car or yep. your home. What, what does insurance run on, say, a forty thousand, forty-five thousand dollars house for? You can run anywhere between three to seven hundred dollars a year. Okay. So per month, that's about what. 50, 60, 60, 60 bucks a month, which is not bad. It's really bad. Yeah, that's full coverage. Yeah. And and you guys, I mean, you guys help someone there at the shop? Or? We refer. We refer our customers. If they ask us for help, you know, we don't ever push somebody to go somewhere. We, we always, just yeah, offer. We, we do recommend customers go to their own insurance company because obviously they can get, like, multi-policy discounts. So that's always the place to start. But if they don't have anybody, then we have some sources that we can send them to okay. that deal with insurance. So can give them some really good so basic insurance like insurance companies at say state farm would also do both absolutely and there's nobody out there that you can say like okay these guys just specifically deal with that or do most insurance companies deal with it most i don't know that i've ever known a company not to deal with insurance yeah, exactly. some may not know how to write a policy as good as somebody who does a lot of boat policies so they might not know what coverages to to offer so what, what are some of the common ones that you guys see from some of the policy policymakers or that suppliers that you guys see it. Yeah. As far as like insurance companies? Yeah, insurance company. Um, it's just the major ones, Allstate, Allstate. State Farm. Um, progressive, Geico. Progressive, Geico. Farmers. Farmers. Yeah, basically everybody, the, the brands that more most people carry. Okay. So um, the bigger brands, Texas Auto. Yeah, you, you have already, that's how the division that can help you out with that. 
and, and is financing the same way in the sense that you can kind of work with your local banks or, or existing banks and you guys get all the offer something or offer that in the big room for something? Absolutely, yeah. We have, I mean, we have one person with and she deals with about 10 11 different banks okay. so there's some options out there yeah At the end of the day i mean it's up to, to you what you want to do yeah. i mean we're here to answer questions you know we don't push anything on anybody so well, like you said like you know 40 to 45 thousand dollar bill you're talking about 350 350 roughly now is that with like credit is that with decent um, credit you have to have decent credit to buy a boat first of all you can't buy a credit with you can't buy a boat with bad credit. It's, what, what it's pretty tough. Uh, along the same lines, I mean, like a down payment. Are you required to give a down payment on a boat? Typically, they would ask for 10%, most banks, uh, but that's where the good credit comes into play. If you have that 800, can we shoot for a zero down? Yeah. We can. Okay. We got a few banks that could do that. So, typical 10%, but it, 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 yeah, depending on the credit, it may be less. I mean, at that point, you start working with the banks and figuring out what your rates are going to be. Correct. The, I mean, the, the banks will typically give you, you know, the longest term possible, um, and then you can pay it off as soon as you want, or, you know, you get the better rates. You might get a better rate from your bank, and we don't discourage that, um, but our banks typically finance longer than your, so let's say you want that 350 payment, uh, but your bank's giving you a better rate, but they only give you, you know, half the time, so your payment's going to be double. Yeah. Um, so it might be more convenient to finance with one of our banks. And our bank, our the banks that we use are very competitive, rate wise, uh, with local credit unions or local banks. Yeah, they're uh, shopping them around yeah. different ones mm-hmm. to a broker and them. exactly. Uh, and, and so you can do all this at the boat show, though, right? I mean, I've seen like, the boat show where there's little booths and there's kind of little yeah. boxes there. We're know, actually going to have our, our ladies going to come in. Uh, she's going to be there for two days. Mm-hmm. We actually have our finance person in our booth. Yeah. She ah, pulls so your you credit. Can go and to the boat show and literally walk out with a. Like, well, with with a, a where the science is. Where the science is. Yeah, you can't take them before later. Yeah. Well, I've gone out there and I've seen like stickers on boats and it's sold. Sold. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you'd be surprised how fast they go. I, I would uh, imagine I see them. Like, I see them coming in and like, and I, you know, we have a booth out there. We, so we're setting up there. We see the boats coming in and like, you know, while we're walking around, you know, a few hours later, they're, they're, they're gone. They're like sold. And well, we're like, just this morning, he goes, God, man, we got 16 boats out there. And then a couple hours later, like, we had four customers come in. I'll well, take away those four from out there because <laughs> they're going to go quick. Yeah, uh, it's it, we're blessed. You know, we, uh, we have a good product. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and by product, you're referring to the Shallow Sport brand and the SCB boat. Yeah. And, well, not only that, our our, our employees. I mean, we got good people. You know, uh, they work hard. Uh, they take care of our customers because they're not really customers. Our family. Yeah. We see them a lot. So, I know we've had shows before where we talk about fishing, and um, we talk about how many more boats we're seeing out there from, let's say, 10 years ago to now. Obviously, do you all see an increase in, in, in buying, in people buying boats, and like, what, what would you attribute that to? I definitely see an increase. Yeah. These guys haven't been in the business as long as I have, but I have definitely seen an increase in, in the amount of boats that we sell now compared to, you know, 10 years ago. And do you attribute that to something? Um, I think, you know, we just live such a crazy, fast life and people just want a way to unwind and spend some quality time with their family and or get away from the wife or get away from the husband or, you know, whatever it is. Whatever it is, yeah. And so, yeah, people are wanting to, to do something different. And so they're buying boats. And compared to 10 years to now, is it easier to buy a boat? Compared to how it was two years ago, or? I think so. There's more financing options. Interest rates are really good. Um, I definitely think so. I mean, I definitely. I mean, I'm sure you guys feel it too when you guys go out there on a Saturday, and if you don't get there right at six o'clock or before six, you're parking across the street or you're parking out <laughs> at the deer lease that's for sure. <laughs> yes. out there. There's just a lot of boats out there, and, uh, and we were actually talking about this in the content, not not in the content of you know boats, but more in the content of. Uh, you know, overfishing areas and you know, now you have all this additional pressure on the fish and, and, and especially on the weekend and, and so just how do we take that into consideration from a conservation standpoint for for, for things out there. But uh, but definitely we definitely we all feel these additional boats out there and we see them out there. 
Oh, I'll point at them when drive by. Why are There is definitely a lot of traffic on, on the bay now. On the weekend. And, you know, we just, we push for conservation. We, we know people, you know, everybody wants to take fish home. Just take what you're going to eat. Right. That's the biggest thing. Catch and release, you know. But I'm sure you guys know it's just not for fishing. People are going out there, like you said, they want to go out and get to the jetties. Yep. Take the family, do the barbecue thing. Duck hunting. Yeah. Go deer hunt. You know, guy hunt. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's I mean, just not just fishing. Yeah. I think four wheelers that on boats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I see that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. The land cut, you, yeah. you see them unloading their four wheelers and riding them around over there. And there's a, it's just like, it just, I think it's just enjoying the outdoors and whatever that means to you and, and being out there. It, it's awesome. Just a way to get away from early the morning when you're going out there. You see that sunrise. It's, it's fantastic. I think more than anything, when you're when you're buying a boat, you, you kind of think of like, oh, I'm gonna own a boat. It's a beautiful boat. I'm gonna catch all these fish or do all these things. But at the end of the day, at the end of ten years, twenty years, thirty years, or whatever, you know, however long you own your boat, it's the memories that you make on the boat. You know, because I'm sure you're like you take you say you take your daughter and your wife. I'm, I'm sure when your daughter's in her 20s or 30s, she's gonna say, and I remember going fishing with my dad all the well, time. I'm, I'm trying to get her like, so she can like start driving the boat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that, that's kind that's of the plan, <laughs> that's the plan. <laughs> so right now she's just like, oh, I'm driving the boat, but later she's gonna be like, oh, I have to drive. And, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but yeah, I'm using it that. Uh, so we do have a little comment here saying that, uh, yeah, I, I think it's actually kind of when we're stepping a little bit further away from the microphone, just so you guys are aware of it. Uh, uh, someone, someone's saying, you know, it's getting a little bit hard to hear at times, but. Uh, uh, so, so outside of buying the boat, you know, you, you have your monthly payment on the boat. You have your insurance payment. Collectively, you know, for a forty-five thousand dollar boat, you're roughly at four fifty now. What are some of the maintenance costs associated with owning a boat, specifically like every year, annualized, or, 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 or seasonal? Uh, most boats are required. You have to do a general maintenance. You have to do a general maintenance on it, which is you know, spark plugs, oils, filters, that those kinds of things, depending on the horsepower. Uh, it can run anywhere from like three hundred to five hundred dollars a okay. year. It's Thank like annual. every hundred hours or a year. Okay. And then maybe every year and a half you do a water pump, which could be two to three fifty. Okay. Um, so it's not. It's. I mean, it's not that horrible. No, like, you know, no. Like it's, it's something you got to plan for. Obviously, you know, you got to plan. You have three hundred bucks there. You know, that's not an option. Like a game. Right? <coughs> well, on your new boats, we offer your first twenty hour services on the house. Okay. So your first twenty hours, we're already giving you a gift. Yeah. You know, um, so, so what's and I, I think I know the answer to this, but what's the what's the reasoning behind twenty hours? Break-in period. Right. You know, you're going to burn less fuel, uh, burn less oil. You're going to get better torque. Uh, you're going to get better fuel. Okay. So there's a couple of variables out there. Yeah. And then also, we want to make sure that when you bring it back, that we can actually see if you're actually riding the boat right. Yeah. That way we can inform you on the do's and the don'ts. Next level again. Yeah. So, so twenty, so twenty hours is kind of that breaking period where everything starts to kind of get in line for like a more you know, permanent time. And then after twenty, it's a hundred hours. Correct. And at that point, it's every hundred hours, every hundred hours. Or, or yearly, or yearly. And then what's the next kind of period for, where there's like a big pipe? That big that, that's that's the big one. The the one yearly is that's your big one. Yeah. So okay. And, and okay, so I. I I mean, I've owned a boat here for a while now, and actually, so and even though you're paying um, a little bit here to get this service here, that actually has a lot to do with the resale value of that boat. Absolutely, it is, you know, people like I've had someone look at like you know one of the boats I was selling, and they said, "Hey, where do you get your maintenance?" And, and I could do it with you guys, and so they they called and said, "Okay, we've got all the records here, and now that you know they didn't, okay, now I can I can, I can prove that you've done it here, and that's one of the reasons I don't do it myself is just uh First of all, I'm running around a lot too, right? But the other thing is, you know, the idea around this boat is I may not have it forever and I may sell it and uh, it's good when someone can, can refer to someone else outside of me and, and say, yep, all the service and this boat has been properly maintained and checked and, and Definitely gives a customer peace of mind. Yep. You know, and, and, and you're taking your kids and your family, Absolutely. your wife, so I'm sure the game will get you. Well, my big thing is, I mean, I like to run on shore a lot. I like, and, and I, I like to run, you know, 20, 30 miles off the jetties, and I don't want, you know, I, I'd rather pay the, you know, three, four hundred dollars a year and have that peace of mind and not have to worry about, hey, the weather's beautiful today, but I can't go snapper fishing because I'm scared or, uh, you know, I don't know my boat's going to do right, whatever. That's, 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 there's a lot of peace of mind because it has happened to me one time. <laughs> and my old boat, my blue wave that I was running in one, one time, and we just had a little bit of an issue with it. And like we, we were able to get it, you know, rigged up enough where we could get back in, but it wasn't pretty. <laughs> we were all scared. 
<laughs> and, uh, and so thank God we, we made it back in one piece. But and ever since then, I said, like, hey, this is, I mean, every time, but once a year, I'm going to get this taken care of. I'm actually due for it here in the next month or so. <laughs> and Bojo kind of reminds me that it's, it's around that time to get it done. But, but, uh, but so, so what, and one thing you said, George, that stood out was that, you know, you look at people and you see after 20 hours, you see what are things, you know, are you, are you doing this right? Are you not doing this right? What are things that you're looking for that kind of give you an indication that a person is or isn't using their boat correctly? Well, one thing that I was taught to always look at is the prop, the condition of the prop. You know, we want to feel it. Uh, obviously, if, if you're going too skinny, you're not adjusting that jack plate where it needs to be. You're going to be hitting your skeg and your skeg. You see that. I mean, and it's okay. That's what it's there for. But if you see that, in 20 hours, your prop is worn out and you've got dings, you need to let them know, hey, you, you need to maybe, where, where are you writing that jack fit at? Do okay. you have it at two? Do you have it at five? Remember, you, and, and there's going to be things on there. When we put the computer on there, you're going to see if you've got some, you know, overheats, over overrevs, over over and that's going to cause issues. And uh, we're going to turn the water on there and it's not, you know, clean out. That means, hey, you're probably running it without water, and you might have already burned out a water pump. So we yep. need to educate you, because then with that, you know, if you don't catch it, time to get my up over here. Yep. Um, and warranty doesn't cover negligence. Yeah. Because that's what that is, is negligence. Yeah. And so there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of education that goes to only when you go, right? Just like just looking at the peeing water, right? Every time you turn that motor on, just like to make sure that it's peeing. Uh, or spitting out water is pretty important. One of the first things that I learned is I just look back all the time, and it has happened to me, especially I've got a little um, color motor on my skiff, and it has happened to me where that thing doesn't uh, it doesn't spit out water. And, and uh, there's been a few times because I don't use it very much, I could just like rev it up, and it just kind of has like a little bit of a little clog, a little yeah. clog in there, and then to clean it up. Or the other times where it's more, we just have to put it back on the trailer, like oh, no fishing today. <laughs> <laughs> but it's better than not, you know, than yeah. getting going out and getting stuck somewhere. And then especially in that little boat where you know there's a lot of boats and a lot of boat traffic that you, you can't move and find yourself in a dangerous situation. So ma maintaining your boat is. Uh, it is definitely something that has a lot of value that can save you a lot of headaches in the future. Well, going back to that, we always recommend customers start their engine at home on the flusher because it checks to make sure you're peeing and it also checks your battery. So do that really quick before you're going to head out. So take your flusher and put you. them out there. And, and that, that doesn't affect the motor in any way. No. Just, you just can't run That's the best thing you can do is just keep running your motor. Like if your motor hasn't been run for two or three weeks or a month, you know. It's good to turn it on. Even if you're not going to use the boat, turn it on. Let it run for a little while. Let it burn some gas that's, that was in the lines. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you can do throughout the year before you get your general maintenance to make sure your boat lives a little bit longer. You know, things like, like what? Like what are some things um, you, you know, some basic things that I tell customers is like, you know, on trailers, you see axles. How many times have you seen somebody on the side of the road with a broken axle or something? Um, you know, you can make sure they're greased if you have... You know, if your if your hubs aren't sealed, wash the axles real good. You know, instead of washing them down for five seconds, wash them down for thirty seconds. You know, let that water run. Instead of letting your motor run for three minutes, let it run for ten. You know, just get that salt out of there. Instead of just rinsing off your boat, scrub it. You know, yeah. just little things like that can ex can extend the life of your boat or make it look cleaner or you know just live longer. Or you can leave your axles. Maybe your axles are gonna last another year or two because you did that extra step. And sometimes you just want to wash the boat and you want to get, you fished all day, you didn't catch anything, you're mad and just want to go inside, you know? It happens to everybody. Yeah. And that's where you tell your customers, look, everybody gets tired. You don't take shortcuts. Remember, your boat's designed to get salt water, but your trailer's not. Yeah. Take care of the trailer. That's what's going to get you. And I see that a lot. Like, I see a lot of tail trailers that get neglected in the sense that, you know, you see the the, 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 the boards on there rotting, the axles on there, you see a lot of rust on the hubs. And, and, and that, it, rust is okay on those hubs, right? It's just a, a certain point, right? Yeah. You just got to be aware of what you have on it. Uh, do you guys uh, service trailers as well there? We do. We sell new trailers, and we could change out a whole axle, change out a spindle, you know, rear tire. How, how often? I mean, uh, granted, it's depending on how often you put that boat in the water, how much salt it is, how much care you go with. Kind of, what's the life of it? You know, assuming in general. Like my, I have my 18 demo is a year and a half old. It has no rust on it, but you can see a boat that is a little left. Two left ago. Yes, and it already has rust on it. Yeah, so. I've seen boats that are two years old and they pretty much need an axle already. And I've seen so boats. So like, how do you like? What are you looking for on the? And now I want to go home and check my trailer. <laughs> <laughs> but what are things that you're looking for on your trailer? Is that kind of give you an that they need to do something about this. Your lug nuts, um, spindle. Yeah, the spindle on the backside, you know, you'll you'll see it's got a bend. Um, those 
those tend to get pretty rusted. You, know, you can, you know, every now and then spray them down WD-40. It keeps some of that salt off. Um, but if you see them corroded, there's a bolt on the backside. If that bolt doesn't have any more thread or you can't really take it off, then you kind of know that something's going up. In the middle of your axle, it's got a dip. Um, and you'll get some, you know, sometimes water will stay there if you don't wash enough with fresh dip. water. And that dip, that's the part that's probably going to cave in. If there's enough rust there, eventually it's going to cave in. That's the part that has the most weight of your boat. Um, so, yeah, I would say those two main spots, the middle and the spindles on the inside part, that's where you're going to see the most rust. Um, that's where you want to wash off the most. Yeah, tire inflation. Tire inflation, yeah. So, so what's typical inflation or pressure rate? 50 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, that's a big overlooked area about owning a boat, just the trailer part of it, right? And so, like, I have, like, I, I, it's funny because, I'm not funny, but I was just looking at my trailer, and uh, actually I just lost my camera here. Give me a second here. Let me, let me correct this here. You guys can uh, continue. Uh, actually, <laughs> drinking some beer here. I don't know what happened here. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get this sorted out here. There it is. It just it went in and out. Sorry about that. All right. So, yeah. So, sorry, like, trailers, trailer neglection is one thing that's just completely different. And it's something that just... I mean, on top of the boat and everything else that you have, now you have the trailer that you have to take care of. Man, I've, we've had customers that have had their boats for what ten plus years. Their trailer's still not there yeah. because they take care of. It. Yeah, and that's and the take care of it is the washing it, washing underneath it every time, and spraying WD forty on the axle. I mean, you'd be surprised what just water would do as soon as yeah, you just water out. Alone. I mean, get that boat out and take it and just get the trailer. Yeah, do the trailer. Okay, and that's as soon as you get out of the water. <laughs> I mean, the front. I mean, obviously, I mean, when you get to the when you get to to your house yeah, or to get to the car wash, or whatever, I mean, you start yeah. from the front, work your way back. You know, get all the beams, get your tires, get your uh, fenders. You know, I mean, I mean, that's your most important. Thing. Even the wheels, wash the wheels down real good because they'll, you know, they have a lot of little cracks and crevices where salt can stay. Just wash them off real good. Just take a little bit longer to to do the process, you know, and all that all that extra time will eventually, you know, give you more time with your boat and more time with your trailer. Yeah, so well, in addition to giving you more time in trailer, right? I mean, these things don't fail when they're at your house, right? They're not. It's not going to break down on you. Your axle's not going to break down on you when you're trailer. It, it may, right? But it's not going to. Chances are, it's going to break down when you're hauling it to go fishing, mm-hmm. or break it when you're coming down to go fishing. So in addition to getting more life out of your trailer, it's going to also safety. save you a few fishing okay. days, right? Well, <laughs> safety, safety, right? Safety is right. Here. Because I have seen, actually, there was a video here not too long ago, and, and I don't know the story behind it, but there was a, a boat that was sitting in some grass. And I it, saw that. And it looked like, I don't know what happened, but like it came off the trailer or something. I think happened. it was an actual. It was an actual. Yeah, and something happened, right? And that boat was sitting out in the grass somewhere, and it was just crazy. Just like, <laughs> and people started putting memes about <laughs> fishing the flats and, <laughs> and losing the tide. But, 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 but the reality was that, you know, something like that can happen to you if you don't take care of your stuff out there. So, in addition to, a bad day of, of, of not fishing, you know, you, you can kind of eliminate a lot of headaches uh, across the board uh, while you're traveling to the water as well as while you're on the water by just taking the proper maintenance on there. Bottom line is take your time. You know, it, it, it's like, I always say, it's, it, it's like golf. If you're in a hurry, you should be playing golf. It's <laughs> thing with fishing. You need to be out there and enjoy it. Take your time, relax. You know, it, a lot can go wrong very quickly. Yeah. You know, um, that's why it's up to Jesse and myself to give the proper orientations twice. You know, we do it inside the showroom and then we kick out to the water do it again. What about, um, so we talk about just like the idea, like a new, someone new, like kind of going in there and buying a boat and like, okay, this is how I operate the boat. But what about just general like boating safety? Is that, what, is that covered at any point? Um, and, or is that something like this? It's on the customer to kind of, to, to, to the boat owner and operator. I, I think part. most of the time the customer will ask you like, hey, well, I don't really know the rules of the water. I don't really know this. So I kind of like educate them to a point where you know, when you're delivering a boat or when somebody's taking ownership of their boat, for one, they're super excited. And you can fill their mind with so many things, you know. Yeah, so Exactly. So you just kind of, kind of give them tips. And oh, right. I always tell customers, you know, any questions, feel free to call us. You know, we're here to help, you know, just... Same way, I, you know, if you'd called me and said, hey, I own this other kind of boat and I just want to know how to do this, I'd gladly help you. You know, I've, I've owned other brands of boats. I've fished all my life. So it's just helping people out and helping each other out. Yeah. Um, we do so. encourage customers to take, uh, you know, boater safety courses. Mm-hmm. You can find them online. Right. And we also host many courses throughout the year in our dealership and we advertise those. The Coast Guard, so when we come out and put them on. 
In fact, our staff has taken them. So yeah. the safety is very important to us. Yeah, no, that's one thing I was, I was kind of covering a little bit. Was that, and you guys, like in addition to selling boats, you guys have a lot of events, kind of a lot of customer engagements at your store. It's like, you know, like six to whatever you have, like, uh, whatever the topics are, whether it's the safety, and I know like women's angling was another one. Yes. You guys did a lot of stuff yes. out there too. Just like whatever it is, like it, it's part of what we're talking about, right? Kind of expressing, like helping people, uh, regardless of what it is. And it's just it goes beyond just you know buying. We, we're not just here to sell you a boat, right? We're here to help you do more than that, right? And and, and if you want to buy a boat, then you know we sell them, but we're you know we're here to promote and encourage and build the fishing community, and that's really our our main demo and that's what we're pushing to be pushing. So it's about relationships and giving back to our community. Yeah. At the end of the day. That, that, that's the big part of it, right? That's that, that's what differentiates us I say us, but like small and like, you know, local type versus big retailers and stuff like that, right? Is that you have a direct impact and a direct relationship uh, within the communities that you operate in and it's important to be able to uh, to, to kind of keep that in mind and you can to get back and try to make the place you live in a, a, a better place. So. Well, guys, I think we're right at our hour mark. So uh, I definitely, I, before we kind of close this, I just want to see, so actually, I'm going to ask you guys, what's y'all's favorite boat? <laughs> and so we talked about Shallow, shallow Sport <laughs> and TCBs, but what's this very specific length, That's model, I already know uh, length, model, yeah. and, and, uh, and what's powering it? What's pushing it? Well, the Shallow Sport is a great boat. Yeah. Uh, it's a great boat. Yeah. Uh, and it's a great boat. Uh, 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 it's a so, <laughs> Twenty classics always been my book that I've always wanted. But and that X three man, yeah, that X three we went out on, on an X three part of the three hundred and fifty Mercury Marauder. Wow, wow, yeah. it's yes. it, it's now. Am I going to use that a lot? Probably not. So the twenty classic is going to be. I'm I'm the guy with the big eyes, <laughs> but I need to come back yeah, to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the twenty classic is something that I would say that's going to be my my next boat and mm -hmm. my favorite right now. Actually, I have to agree. Twenty classic is my favorite boat. I'm taking a more waiting this year, so the ease of getting on and off. And of course, we have a new demo with the twenty four. So wow, all that extra space. <laughs> um, but for me, if I want to take out just me and my husband, or me and my husband and my daughter, the twenty classic is. No, not as big, easier to maneuver. Um, so the 20 Classic is my favorite boat. Okay, good deal. So the Classic's pretty easy. Two boats for the Classic, and I guess it's going to fill a little. No, no, no. My, my, I would say definitely Classic 24. Really? That 24 demo that we're, that we're on now. So we got a 250 on Juan Show. Yeah. Um, runs great, runs shallow, easy to wait off of. It's, it's, it's a cattle. It's a cattle. Yeah, yes. runs yeah. runs great. You know, runs smooth. But that's not a family boat. Right? It's more of it. Oh no, that's definitely family. All the all. Yeah, those boats I think I think people are under the misconception because it doesn't have sides. Right. It's dangerous, but to me, I think because it's got extra walking room and nothing the side you can't trip over, I think it's actually could be safer. It, okay. It, it's yeah. psychological. It's a psychological. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I mean, like I see, like I see, like uh, boats without all these wallets boats, and I see them. And, and uh, I've never owned one, right? But uh, I think uh, you know, it's like, oh, but that thing, you know, it's nice to get in and out. You just step right on on that when you're waiting. But it's like, I, I don't know if I put my daughter on that, but but it seems like like I'm, 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 I'm just, I just haven't been on. I haven't been on in a while. We're gonna take you on. Our yeah, we're gonna take you out there. <laughs> we're gonna take both of you. Well, that'll change. No, we can take this guy out there I because mean, he's like. Yes. I, there was another one. Yeah, I yeah. Know, I'm I'm just looking at him. I've got two boats right there. <laughs> but, oh, but once you have that X three, it, it's hard to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's hard man, to go and say, "I want to go down, great the twenty. Yeah, X three is. Just, I mean, your hole shots are phenomenal. We got out of a nine-inch hole shot from that twenty-five yeah. inch three. I, I've got a two fifty on it, and it pushes it pretty well. The thing is, like with us, like I just we keep it gassed up because we like to run offshore or whatever, and, and so we and that has two sixty gallon things. That's heavy, right? Yeah. yeah. And then we have a two fifty show that's pushing it, and it can get it up out there. But it, you know, it takes a little bit of maneuvering. You have to know kind of how to get how to operate that. And I'm still debating whether or not to put trim tabs on it, because I'm sure putting those trim tabs on there would help me as well too. But but yeah, just I normally keep it heavy, and just like that. It's just a stable ride, and, and, and I, but I keep it heavy too because uh, in addition to running offshore, uh, that additional weight obviously helps with the with the chop and you're going through. But I like to run it for the line cut too. And, and anyone who fishes out of Port Manasseh knows that it gets pretty windy out here, and, and mm -hmm. you know, I have enough weight on um, fuel wise, and as well as I got a water tank on that too. Uh, is I can I can take 
the chalk won't scare me. Like, I've seen boats kind of running up to the sidelines or whatever, and I'm just like, like right in the camera. Yeah. Just, you got a four by four. It's a yeah. big <laughs> difference. It's just kind of like watching yes. people go by, you know, you know, and just have it. And we're cruising down, and everyone's comfortable, and you can get up and walk, and we're going, you know, 40, you know, into, into the wind. And, it's, it's, it's a, and you don't feel it. And you don't feel it. You don't. It's just like you can just get up and Jack walk Kenny's. and everything else. So. Mm -hmm. cool. so it's definitely a phenomenal boat. I definitely like it a lot. Like, uh, it's, but I, I haven't been on a classic, so I might, we might take them up and, and go out and check out one of these. I mean, that boat is probably the coolest ride. Yes. 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 I took actually, I took Baby in a snapper fishing not too long ago, and, and he liked the ride out there. As soon as we stopped, he didn't like that part of it. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> got the wave. He got you. So, oh, so, oh, oh, I, I will say I didn't throw up. Yeah. So, <laughs> I can claim that. I'm Good for you. Take a nap for a while. Yeah, you can lay down and catch them. Take the patch. Get the patch on and everything. I did the drama me. I did the whole thing. And like I told them, I think it was what screwed me up was that uh, I tried untangling the line. <laughs> yeah, oh. I guess I just focused on it. Uh, I messed you up. Yeah, uh, I messed you up. Yeah. I saw him and I saw him like kind of getting busy and I was like, you just cut the line. Wait, 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 time out. So, where was the captain? Captain didn't take care of your stuff. For it's you? not a guided trip. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not a captain. He's a, we're all kind of doing that while he's up. Yeah, I'm looking for the other guys that are going down second throw my line. Chubby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm looking. I'm waiting to see who's going to throw up first. I can, you know, capitalize on that. But, uh, yeah. That's the kind of captain I am. So, but uh, but anyways, uh, but I, I definitely sincerely want to thank you guys for coming out here. And you guys came all the way from San Benito, uh, up at uh, the Sportsman. I, all, I know all of my audience knows exactly who you guys are, <laughs> and, and they've seen you, and and they talk to you, and they probably a lot of them are your customers too, right? So, uh, so thank you again for coming out here for helping to educate our our, our guys here, and uh, and really just want people to get really excited about about this upcoming boat show season and coming out. <laughs> kind of been on the line and you know i don't know if i want to spend this or kind of do that the idea around this show is kind of get people like hey this is what you need to know these are things to consider uh it's pretty interesting and pretty really amazing that you're all through you said this classic was your favorite boat so it's definitely going to open up a lot of eyes <laughs> and say that hey maybe we need to look at this and uh and versus whatever we were thinking before right just all get out there and try and look, look at these at the show so and real quick i just want to let everybody know the viewers don't wait till the boat show, guys. You know, uh, boat show, we're limited to who we can talk to in our time out there. So get an early start. Come and talk to us now. You know, that way we have some time. And if we don't get to you at the boat show, come back to our office. We have one-on-one -on -one with you. We want, to, we want to talk to you guys. So if you come you early, you can already start talking about what you're looking for and, and get it kind of build and, and all that stuff. So and don't then wait. Video, yeah. Don't wait. You know, it's just, it's hard. There's only two of us and, and Chris is going to be there. But, you know, boat shows get crazy. Yeah. So, and the last thing we want to do is rush the process. We want you to, we want to treat every customer the, the same. Yeah. We want to take our time. So if someone comes out now, they can, they can at least start planning it and then they can take advantage of any kind of boat show, Absolutely. especially during that. Absolutely. Get an early start. Get an early start. Come stop by, check out which water you like, get out, and then choose what options you have. So you have a really good idea of this kind of plugs the deal. Get a lot of the questions out of the way. And the boat show dates are February 7th, 8th, and 9th. Yep. McAllen Convention Center. McAllen Convention Center. We'll be there. 8th and 9th, you're right. So we'll all be there. Good. And we're really excited about it. So, and hopefully by then I would have tried out that boat. But I don't I don't think so. Oh, no, the time <laughs> after, after, after the after the boat show, we'll, we'll, we'll take you up. Tell you what, if y'all call yes. in sick, I know a doctor. Get your doctor. To <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna call in sick to myself. You're out fishing, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, but uh, but th thanks again, guys, for watching us here, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank All you right, for nice guys. Have a good one. Um, Hold on, we're still live here, guys. Give me a second here. <laughs> Let me end it here. In my mind, I've got a big win on the line. That's where I go when I'm itching to feed my seven day addiction.